So let's now look at alkenes as the next hydrocarbon family that we, we are going to look at. So remember the first one we have just look at, looked at alkenes, now we are in alkenes. So let's look at alkenes. So we see that these are hydrocarbons with at least one double bond in their structure. So they at least have one double bond in their structure and we see that their general formula is CnH2n. So that's the general formula for the alkenes. So for the alkenes, remember we said that the general formula for the alkenes was CnH2n plus 2. That was alkenes. Now in this one, we are now in alkenes. So the general formula for alkenes, it is CnH2n. So also for the alkenes, you see that they form the homologous series whereby the first member of alkene is ethene. The first member is not, met, it's not methene. There is no methene. So why is it that there is no methene? So there is no methene because at least carbon should be bonded to, should have two bonds bonding to another atom. But we see in methane, like for example methane, in methane, so carbon is bonded to four hydrogens. The valency of each hydrogen is only one. The valency of carbon is four positive or negative, meaning that carbon can be able to form two bonds. But now the hydrogens only can accommodate only one electron. They cannot accommodate more than one electron. Therefore, it is impossible to have methane because the hydrogens in the meth, they can only accept one electron from the carbon and not two. Therefore, we cannot have methane. So the first member of the alkene family is ethene because at least we have two carbons and then the two carbons, they'll have a double bond between them. So the first member of the homologous series of the alkene is ethene. And the stated reason is the reason why we don't have methane because carbon, because hydrogen can only accept one electron from carbon and not two. So the first member is ethene because at least two carbon atoms are necessary or at least two electrons are necessary for the formation of the double bond. So below is the table which summarizes, uh, summarizes the the, the alkenes from the first one which is ethene or rather we can say from the second one which is ethene up to the last one which is the kin. So as you can see the, the, the designated numbers have been given, also the relevant names have been given, the molecular formula as you can see, the open structural formula, the skeletal structure and then the condensed structural formula. So for the skeletal structure, you'll realize that at least periodically we have two lines and then the line continues. So those two lines, which are close as you can see, so those one represents the double bond. So if you see those two lines like that and then we have now the straight lines continuing, so those ones represent a double bond. And it's very easy for you. If you have been able to draw the open or the closed formula, it is now very easy for you now to draw now this skeletal structure. So for you to show the double bond in the skeletal structure, just draw the two lines and then continue with the, with the normal lining that you are doing. So from the table, we see that each alkene differs from the other by the same CH2 value. Like for example, the difference between a thin and propene is only one, uh, it's only one carbon and two hydrogens. Just the same, same way as the alkenes. So the members differ from each other by a value of CH2. Yeah, yeah like also you can compare between propene and butene, so you'll see. So it is only a difference of one carbon and two hydrogen atoms. So as this is so, uh, we see that they also form the homologous series because first of all, remember we say that they share a similar general formula which is CnH2n and then also we see that the members differ from one another by a similar unit. So a similar unit is CH2. So you should know that those, at least those things, they tend to support that these ones fall under a similar homologous series. So in, the sorry, in the functional groups, we see that a functional group is a part of a compound which has a characteristic set of property. So we have different functional groups whereby this will now form the branches that we have just looked at in the previous class. The branches, they bring or they create a functional groups in the hydrocarbon. So remember, functional group is a group. Uh, 
So remember, functional group is a part of the compound which has the characteristic set of properties in that hydrocarbon. So for example, we see that if bromine reacts with an alkene, so bromine is going to be integrated in the structure of the alkene as we have it. So like for example, if you can look at the first structure, so the first structure is 2 bromo 4 5 dimethyl heptane. So this structure, we looked at it in the previous class. So 2 bromo 4 5 dimethyl heptane. So since bromine is in the structure, since we have 2 methyl in the structure, so they form the functional groups uh, in the hep heptane. So they form the functional group in the heptane or the heptane as the diagram states. So also for the other structure, we see that we have two bromobutane. So uh, bromine has been added in the structure of the butane as a functional group to form two bromobutane. And as such, as bromine has been added, bromine has been added and has settled in the carbon number two. So in naming of this structure, you must begin by identifying the position of the functional group and then identifying the name of the functional group, then identifying the longest carbon chain uh, that you have been asked or that is in the picture. So those are the functional groups. So remember, functional group is a part of a compound which has a characteristic set of properties in it. So away from the functional groups, let's now look at isomerism in alkenes. So isomerism, so this is another new term that we are going to define, isomerism. So what is, what is isomerism? So simply for the isomerism, we'll say that this is a situation whereby two or more compounds have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So or we can say it's a phenomenon whereby the members of, uh, the, members of the hydrocarbon, they have the same molecular formula. So the molecular formula is exactly similar. But the only different thing is the structural formula. Like the molecular formula, let's say, for example, the molecular formula for, for hexane or maybe for butane or, yeah, for butane so that to understand isomerism. So the molecular formula for butane is supposed to be C4 and H10. So you see, that is the molecular formula. And then to draw the structure of butane, so the structure of butane is going to be drawn as shown. So that's the structure of butane. So take note, this is the molecular formula and then that is the structure. So that is isomerism. So isomerism simply, this is the situation whereby two or more compounds in a hydrocarbon have a similar molecular formula. So the molecular formula is same, but the only different thing is now the structure. So the molecular formula is the same, but now the different thing is the structure. This one has a structure looking like this, and in that structure, it has four carbons and it has 10 hydrogen. So they all satisfy the molecular formula. The structure is the one which is only different. So they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So such compounds, they are referred to as isomers. So these compounds which have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula, these compounds are referred to as isomers. Yeah, so that is an isomer. So for example, we see, or, yeah, for example, uh, we, uh, like we look at the compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So let's look at some different examples. Like let's take, for example, butene. Now let's take butene. So butene, remember, uh, if we apply the formula being C4H, HN, H2N, yeah, C4H2N, that being the formula for the alkenes, we see that we have four carbons and then we have eight hydrogens. So for butene, we see that the carbons are four, the hydrogens are eight. So being like that, that is the molecular formula. But now the structural formula will be different. So this is the, the structural formula for butene, the actual butene, that is the formula. Now to draw the different isomers of butene, those are the different isomers. So you see, the molecular formula is the same, but the structure, we just alter the structure. But then again, remember, the carbons must be exactly four, the hydrogens must be exactly eight. So even if you're going to alter the structure looking what and what, make sure that the carbons in that new structure are four, hydrogens are eight. Like for example, you can see these structures, so those structures are the isomers of the butene that we have. We also have the cyclobutene as uh, the structure or as the isomer of butene. 
So far from isomers, again, let's now look at the nomenclature of alkenes. So nomenclature basically means naming. So naming of alkenes. So how do we name the different alkenes that we have? So this is the nomenclature of alkenes. And then there are rules in this nomenclature. So there are rules that should be followed in naming of alkenes. So you just don't name them. Like first rule is that you should identify the longest carbon chain having a double bond. So the longest carbon chain having a double bond is the first one that you must identify. So that is the first rule. Identify the longest carbon chain with the double bond. Like for example, what I've drawn there. So at least that is the longest carbon chain as you can see for the skeletal structure, for the other structure. So at least identify the longest carbon chain in the structure. So apart from that, the second rule is that the carbon atom in the chain are numbered in such a way that the carbon having the double bond or the side which the double bond is always takes the lowest number possible. So the side whereby the double bond is always takes the lowest number possible. Even if there are branches. So first of all, in numbering, ignore first of all the branches. So whereby the double bond is, that side give it the lowest number possible. So the third rule is that the position of the group is indicated by showing the position of carbon atom which they are attached. So if the carbon atom is attached in, if the branch is attached in carbon number three, so identify the branches in carbon number three. If the branch is in carbon number four, identify that the branch is in carbon, uh, yeah, carbon number four. So that is the third rule. So the first rule, identify the longest chain. The second rule is that where the double bond is, that carbon is given the lowest number possible. And then if we have substituent uh, branches or functional groups, give, identify the number and the position of those functional groups. So the next one, uh, the next one will say that in case we have two bonds, in case we have two bonds in the structure, so always give the names and the position of those two bonds. Don't ignore them. Give the position and the names of those two bonds. You must identify the position and the names of those two bonds. Like for example, this structure. So this is the normal hex in structure. So you can call it hex one in. Hex one in because the double bond is appearing immediately after carbon number one. So in carbon number one, so since double bond is in carbon number one, so that is hex one. So one identifies the position of the double bond carbon number one. So it is hex one in. So if we have now two double bonds, like let's say for example we have the two double bonds in carbon number one and immediately after carbon number three, so we must give them the identity. So we must identify their position. So we'll say that now this structure will be called hex one three di in. Di means two. Remember we say that di means two, tri means three, tetra means four, uh, pent means five, hex means six. So for example, here we have two double bonds. So we have the first double bond in carbon number one, the second double bond in carbon number three. So we must identify these two positions. So the first position of double bond is in carbon number one, the second one is in carbon number, in carbon number two. So this structure will be labeled as hex, hex to represent the longest carbon chain. Hex is the longest carbon chain. So it is hex one to represent the first one is in carbon number one and then the, the second one is in carbon number three. So it is hex one, three, and then we have two double bonds. So if we have two double bonds, so you finish by saying die in. So it is hex one, three, die in. So let's look at a question which we might be asked. So the question, uh, it, let's try to frame it. So for each of the following alkenes, draw the structural formula. So each of the following alkenes draw the structural formula. So you have been given. The first alkene is hex one in. So like the one that we have just, we are just done. So it, it means that the double bond is found immediately after carbon number one. So after carbon number one, draw the double bond as you can see in my structures. So this is the, the condensed structural, uh, structural formula. Then we have also the zigzag, which is the skeletal formula. So we have the hex one in. If you see one in, it means that the double bond is immediately after carbon number one. So you have carbon number one, I love the double bond follows there. So the next one is prop, prop one in. So prop, remember, is carbon number three. We have three carbons. So prop one in, it means that the double bond is found immediately after carbon number one. 
So you can draw the double bond on that side, you can draw the double bond on this side, as long as it is after carbon number one, the first carbon from one in. So we have prop one in. So apart from that, we have hex two in. So hex two in, it means that the double bond is found immediately after carbon number two. So after carbon number two, we have the double bond. So we have that. And also the one that uh, we are just asked, uh, well, let's try to frame it now with heptane. So draw the structure of hept 2, 4. So the structure of hept 2, 4, diene. So hept 2, 4, diene means that the first double bond is in carbon number 2. After carbon number 2, we have the first double bond. And then after carbon number 4, we have the, the other double bond. So hept 2, 4, diene. So that will be the structure. That is the structure of hept 2, 4, diene. Also, not to forget, we have the structure of but 2 in. But 2 in, it means that the double bond is after carbon number 2. We have uh, somewhat another, like, kind of challenging. It has other functional groups. So we have 2-methyl but 2 in. 2-methyl but 2 in. So it means that the methyl is found in carbon number 2, and then the double bond is also found in carbon number 2. Because we have been told that 2-methyl, branches in the carbon number two and then two in the double bond is in carbon number two and then lastly we have this other one two chloro three methyl but two in so it means that chlorine is in carbon number two as you can see chlorine is found in carbon number two and then we have methyl uh, group which is found in carbon number three and then we have the double bond is found in carbon number two so as to make two chloro three methyl but two in so the longest chain is but, B-U-T. Longest chain but means that we have how many carbon atoms? So it, so it means that we have at least uh, four carbon atoms. So apart from that, let's look at now isomerism in alkenes because we are like going back to where we are because we must identify the two types of isomerism. So for the isomerism, remember we had introduced and said that isomerism, this uh, phenomenon whereby uh, two or more hydrocarbons, they have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So as well we see that in isomerism of alkenes, we have two types of isomerism. So we have the branching isomerism and then we have the positional isomerism. So the branching isomerism deals with, deals with just removing a functional group or a member from one position of the structure and placing it in another position of the structure. So it mainly occurs when a substituent group is attached to one of the carbon atoms, one of the carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. So if you remove a substituent group from a, another position of the chain and bring it in another position, that basically forms, it basically forms the branching isomerism, just by altering the branches from the, from the parent hydrocarbon. So like for example, you can look at, this, uh, at these examples so you have, for example, two methyl but one in to get uh, to be an isomer of pentene, like for example. So we have the branching isomerism, and then also we have the positional isomerism. Whereby for positional isomerism is so simple, you just change the position of the double bond. So if the double bond is in carbon number one, you bring it to carbon number three. If the double bond is in carbon number three, you bring it to carbon number four. If it's in carbon number four, carbon number five. That is simply positional isomerism. That is the simplest isomerism. So the, for the branching isomerism, you can remove a substituent group from another, another position of the, parent, uh, of the parent hydrocarbon and bring it to another position. For the positional isomerism, you only need to change the position of the double bond. So if you change the position of the double bond, you are good to go. That is an isomer. Because if maybe, for example, we are speaking about hex 1 in, that is a complete structure, hex 1 in. If you speak, at, uh, if you speak of hex 2 in, that is another structure altogether. If you speak of hex 3 in, that is another structure. Those are all isomers of hex 1 in. So those are all isomers. So as well, you will be correct. So we have those two different types of isomerism, whereby we have the branching isomerism, we have the positional isomerism, and don't forget that. So we can try to again rephrase another question. Uh, the question is asking, draw the possible isomers of hexene resulting from positional and branching isomerism. So draw all the possible isomers of hexene resulting from positional and branching 
isomerism. So as you can see, these are examples of the positional and the branching isomerism.